One of the biggest struggles that I see most producers and mixing engineers facing, especially early in their careers, is getting a perfect listening environment. And to be honest, I can understand why this is such a struggle and a hurdle for most people because it is super expensive, it takes a ton of time, and it is a massive headache to get a room with perfect dimensions, treat that room with acoustic treatment, get the right monitors, get the right subwoofer, tune it all up, and find your perfect listening spot. It could take tens of thousands of dollars and months of your time with doing trial and error. And to be honest, a lot of people don't have that amount of time and resources, but it can be a critical, critical factor when you are producing or when you're mixing to be able to have some kind of objective listening point where you can understand an issue that might be in the song versus an issue that's gonna be in your listening environment. So either your monitors or your room or your headphones that you're using or whatever. But to be honest, this is something that I see most people struggle with, and it has always been a super expensive and time-consuming uh, issue to try to remedy. However, in the past couple years, there has been a product come onto the market. I'm sure you're familiar with it. It's the Slate VSX system. It's basically a set of headphones that also comes with software where you can select a bunch of different listening environments. And in this tutorial today, what I want to do is I want to talk about the VSX system. Is it worth it? What have my experiences been? And I want to go ahead and show you through the software, talk about some of my favorite rooms, some of my favorite uses, and just kind of give you a nitty-gritty dive into what the VSX system is. I've actually been using this headphone since their Founders Edition came out years ago. I bought them with my own money, and even though I'm in a fully treated room with Focal speakers, a Focal sub, and it's all tuned up by an acoustician, I still jump to my VSX all the time to actually monitor and get references, and especially when I'm downloading a mix that I'm really in love with that is a commercial mix, I will listen through the VSX, and I'll kind of dive into all of that. So we're going to get into that in the video, but before we do, I do just want to say this video is sponsored by Slate Audio, so thank you to Slate for sponsoring this video. With that said, all of the opinions in this video are my own. I love the VSX system. Like I said, I bought my first pair with my own money years ago, and I've been using them ever since, even in a treated room. But I did just want to say it is sponsored, but everything that we're going to talk about today was all my idea. It's all my opinion, and to be honest, I just want to share it because this is something I've used and talked about for years, and I think they deserve a full video on the channel. So let's dive in. These are the Slate VSX headphones. As you can see, see they are pretty minimal they look like most uh kind of consumer or producer grade headphones on the market i will say they are very lightweight which is one of the things that i like most about them because whenever i've tried to mix in headphones in the past they've always been really heavy and really stuffy and within an hour or two i'm sweating in the headphones they're starting to give me a headache they're kind of pinching on the back of my ears and it's something that i don't really love about mixing in headphones i really will only wear headphones in the studio if i'm tracking but since i got to slate vsx years ago these are the only ones that i can actually sit in for more than probably three or four hours and it's because they're so light on your head they have a really nice flexible band and to be honest i've had the founders edition for years thrown them in backpacks traveled with them never had an issue with the band breaking or anything never had an issue with a cable breaking or snapping and uh they're just really really nice the actual ear cups themselves are super soft they're super supple and they fit my ears personally really 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 well and i do like the fact that you have a removable cable so if you ever do start to have a frayed cable or if that uh you know becomes an issue in the future you can always just get like a 3.5 millimeter cable and uh you can just plug it right into here into the left headphone and you're good to go so that is what the actual headphones themselves look like i believe they have beryllium drivers uh here is the original version there have been a couple updates to the headphones since the founders edition i believe that they have replaced the band uh with something a little bit more sturdy in the new edition but to be honest like i said before i never really had quality issues with the originals i do think that the new set might be a little bit more comfortable on my ear but it also could be because i've had these on my ears for years and i've kind of worn down the padding just a hair on the vsx founders editions but that is the actual physical physical makeup of the VSX headphones. I just wanted to give you that, but let's go ahead and let's start talking about where the VSX really shines, and that is within the software. Let's dive into the software. For that, I'm gonna be in Cubase. The only thing is these software kind of modules are really dependent on having that actual headphone itself. So in this video, we won't be doing any listening to the software. However, I will talk about what some of my favorite rooms are, some things that I like about certain rooms, and which ones I recommend kind of starting with. But let's go ahead and talk about how to even get the software open. You could always add it to an individual channel or I could add it to my master bus right here, either pre or post fader. However, in Cubase, there's an even better way to do this, and I'm gonna talk about why I do this. And that is if you open up the side panel, you can go to your control room and I can activate it right here under inserts. So you have your main and your inserts tab. And the reason that I like to do it in my control room specifically is because if I have my mix that I'm sending to my master bus and let's say I'm pulling in a reference. So if I pull in a Dua Lipa song, I can still drag that into my DAW and I can kind of send that out to my monitors. But that way, if I add VSX to this master bus automation, 
it's only going to affect what's coming into that. But if I were to send that reference track into here, that reference track is going to hit all of my master bus processing. So it's going to kind of mess that up. So I can have individual tracks that I just send to my monitors. I can have that that I'm actually mastering and automating. And then I can have my VSX just kind of be on Cubase as a whole, which I find is kind of the easiest way to go. So now that we're in the software, I'm gonna show you around. Before we dive into that, I do wanna talk about a couple things. So recently they announced that they have an Essentials version of VSX and a Platinum version of VSX, and it's gonna be the same physical headphones. You're gonna get the carrying case. It's gonna be all that same stuff no matter what. However, with Essentials, you're gonna get a certain selection. It's kind of a narrowed down selection of different rooms and listening environments. We're gonna list all of those over here so you can see exactly what rooms and what environments the Essentials version comes with, and then the actual Platinum version is $499, and that's going to get you all of the rooms, all of the listening environments, and free updates for when they release more rooms, expansion packs, things like that in the future. The cool thing is, though, is that now with Essentials, if you buy in at $299, they also have a VSX marketplace where you can go and you can buy individual listening environments for you know anywhere between $30, $40, or $50, and they even sell bundles of the studios, a reference bundle. So it's really cool. You can kind of buy in at the cheaper price, but then you can kind of customize it and tailor it to whatever you're actually looking for in VSX if you feel like you don't need every single room or listening environment. I just wanted to dive into that because I thought that was really cool when they rolled that out over November or October. Uh, and it's just something that I feel like is a good idea. When I bought the Founders Edition, they were $500 and you just got the software and everything that it came with. But then uh, like I had to buy the Mike Dean expansion pack myself. Now, if I had platinum, that would all just be included. So let's go ahead and let's actually dive into this VSX software so I can show you around. It's really well designed. It doesn't kill my CPU or anything like that, but there's a couple things that we need to talk about. So up top, you have ear profiles. You can select one, average, or two. This is basically just gonna be the size of your ear canal. And you can kind of just flip between those and see whatever sounds best to you. It just changes the way that for me, especially like the high mids kind of resonate for different rooms. So I have mine on ear profile number two. Uh, the other cool thing is that you have your favorites down here. So you can flip between different studios and you can flip between different, uh, you know, modes. So you have midfield, far field, and some of the studios you'll have near field. And if you ever go to a different environment, you can also just right click on these and you can hit save to you know, whichever position you right click on, which I find is really, really nice, especially if I don't want to have to go in and browse rooms, especially if I'm trying to flip quickly. Uh, having this actual room selection, this actual fave five is a huge thing that just speeds up my workflow. The other thing that you can engage is a two second palette cleanser, which means that as you flip between environments, it's going to give you a two second silent delay. So you're not just bouncing between different environments because some of them can be a very, very, very stark contrast. You have to remember that these rooms all have different frequency responses. Some of the rooms have different kind of saturation modes. Some of the rooms have different time issues. So one of the things that can be really helpful, especially as you're getting started, is starting with that two second palette cleanser. Same thing right here with depth. You can go low to full. This is going to kind of affect the binaural impact pulse that you're going to hear in your head. So if you put them on and it feels a little bit disorienting or it feels like it's just a little bit much, you can always dial that back. I actually normally prefer it right in the middle. That just kind of sounds like a realistic room to my ears personally. But again, you can kind of customize this to your experience. Then they've got an EQ over here. I honestly almost never use the EQ because I just listen to the rooms for what they are. But if you have a certain room that you really like and you still want to add your own tweaks on it, feel free to EQ that. It will save it in your Fave 5. Uh, other than that, you've got your input level, you've got your output level, and then the cool thing about the software is you have bypass, and if you bypass, it's just going to give you an HD linear headphone. So I can show you that in these rooms. This is just kind of like the standard headphone sound of the VSX system. And to be honest, these headphones are insane. They're super flat. These are some of my favorite headphones that I've ever heard, the HD Linear 1 and the HD Linear 2. And to be honest, I think that the essentials are worth it for the price alone if you were only going to use the VSX headphones with one of these modes. Uh, and that's just going to be in your bypass, so I don't have either of those selected as a uh, shortcut or a Fave 5 because I can just get there with hitting that button. There's no reason to take up a little module right here. So that is kind of the layout of this. Other than that, you can browse your rooms right here. And this is going to depend on if you have the Essentials or the Platinum version. So we linked up earlier uh, what the Essentials version comes with. Here's everything that the Platinum version comes with. You've got Stevens Mix Room, NRG, Mike Dean, Howie Weinberg, Archon, uh, Zuma Studios, Sonoma Studios, Mike Dean's car, which I believe is a Tesla P100, electric car, which looks like it might be a Tesla Model 3, the SUV, which uh, looks like it's probably a Tesla Model X. Then you've got an audiophile room. You've got a nightclub. This is a really cool setting for just checking how your low-end decays, especially if you're going to have it 
uh, playing in something like a club. You've got a boom box. We'll talk about this more in a minute when we talk about my favorites. And then you've got a bunch of different headphone modules. So you've got the 650, you've got the 770, you've got the M50, you've got the LCD, you've got the AirPods, and then you've got the HD linear. So again, once you select these though, a lot of these rooms will have different speakers. And this is one of my favorite things about VSX is once I find a room that I really, really like, I can kind of check things. So if I go to near field, it's gonna go to this mono aura tone right here. If I go to midfield, it's gonna go to these. These, it looks like barefoot micro mains. And then if we go to far field, it looks like we're gonna go to, it looks like a PMC to me. So we can go right there. And that's dramatically going to impact what it sounds like or how it uh, comes across. So if you're working on something that's got a lot of low end, you might want to check it on some far fields and make sure that that low end still feels nice and tight when it's coming through really, really hot. If you're working on something where the mids are going to be super, super key, like let's say a rock song, I always find that working on something like a midfield for rock or for some kind of like acoustic pop really helps me dial in and get the mid sounding perfect where you don't have some mud, you don't have these really aggressive high mids, you can kind of control sibilance. And then if I want to check how something's going to sound on a smaller speaker, I'm going to dial in these near field. So, you know, this almost sounds like a phone if we go to Steven's Aura Tone right here in the middle. Uh, this doesn't even have a near field. These near fields are like just a really, really flat, almost like small speaker if you weren't to have a sub. So if you were to use something like the Focals that I have without a sub or some Yamahas, um, there's actually a couple studios in here that have those. And then, yeah, see right here, Mike Dean's near fields, these NS10s are amazing for checking mids. And to be honest, it's just really, really nice to have speaker options. So, I mean, you've got hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of different speakers and different rooms in here. So feel free once you download VSX, especially if you're getting the platinum version, uh, dive in because it can be a lot to listen to and make sure you give yourself time to kind of adjust because even when I got the VSX, I've worked in a treated room with a subwoofer and monitors for a really, really, really long time. And it does take some getting used to to kind of hear that exact response in headphones because normally with headphones, you're used to hearing super exaggerated left, super exaggerated right, and then kind of a phantom center because it's basically working off of two drivers that are directly inside or on top of your ear. But with these, since you're in a room, it's kind of spreading that stereo image a little bit more realistically how it is if you're listening to monitors anywhere from, you know, six to 10 feet away. So make sure you give yourself time to kind of acclimate to the VSX system because this could be a really, really stark difference from what you're used to. So now we've kind of shown you around the software. We've talked about some of my favorite features and uses. Let's talk about some of my specific favorite rooms and why I'm using those rooms. So right here, the first room that we have is the brand new room. It's Dezuma Studios. They just released this one. This is in the Platinum version. But again, if you have essentials, you can always just buy this room separately. I really, really, really like the low end, especially on these far fields. I find that if I'm working on hip hop or electronic music or some kind of like really big kind of bombastic pop music, the lows in here are really nice. It's not super, super exaggerated like the Mike Dean room that we'll talk about in a minute. But I do find that this is one of the closer feelings to actually having a subwoofer. Of course, since they're headphones, you're not gonna get that physical response where you feel the low end in your chest, but it does legitimately sound like there are subwoofers in your ears. You're just not gonna get that kind of physical vibration. Other than that, uh, the midfields are also really nice just for checking mids. If I wanna make sure that you know I have a guitar that's not stepping on a vocal, these are really, really good for that. Uh, we can go to the Second room, which is going to be my Archons. I find that the Archon midfields are honestly the probably flattest and most realistic, in my personal opinion, in all of VSX. They're the first ones that I fell in love with, and they're still ones that I go and check almost every mix that I do on. And to be honest, they sound kind of similar to how my Focals in my personal room sound. So you're going to get flatter mids, you're not going to get super exaggerated top end, and you're not going to get super exaggerated bottom end. And to be honest, if I have a mix that I've done on my monitors, but I'm not feeling it 100%, typically the Archon mids are the first thing that I'll check on and then I'll check them on these actual uh, linear headphones and then I'll start checking specific things like low end or sibilance or really, really nasally top end on some of the other monitors that we'll talk about in just a second. But the Archon mids are chef's kiss. They like knock that one out of the park. Again, those are going to be in platinum, but you can also get them from the VSX marketplace. Let's go ahead and talk about the third one that I use all the time. And this is Steven's room. When I got the Founders Edition, this was not one of the original rooms, but I think it might've been the first update that they ever did. And to be honest, I fell in love with it from the first time that I've heard it. These mids are perfectly balanced, and I find that the kind of stereo field in this really does mimic what my monitors sound like because I don't have mine too far away. I believe they're about four and a half, five feet from me. Uh, and to be honest, this room right here, especially with the midfields, 
really does kind of replicate what my monitors sound like in my room, especially when I'm checking things like panning or stereo field or how wide a vocal gets. So I really, really love Steven's room for that. Uh, this is in the essentials. So if you're in the essentials, this would be the first room that I start with. And then this room as a bonus, just having that war tone, that little mono uh, speaker in the middle amazing for checking your mono summings. I'm not a huge mix and mono person, but I will always kind of flip this on, especially now that I have DSX. And to be honest, if it rocks on this and it rocks on these midfields, it's probably good to go everywhere. Let's talk about the next one. And that is this Mike Dean Studio. Uh, to be honest, this was an expansion that I bought and I loved this at first because the mains kind of sound like Mike Dean's music, super aggressive subs, crazy, crazy low end. So if I'm checking something like a really, really obnoxious hip hop record on this or like a club record, Mike Dean's mains are going to be my first choice. And then I always love checking things like vocals on these NS10 near fields, because to me, if you can get a vocal to pop out of a mix on something like an NS10, uh, it's going to be money. So I will always kind of reference low end on these mains, and then I'll reference something like vocals, and especially how vocals interact with things like synths and guitars on these near fields right here. Can't go wrong with an NS10, and these are just absolutely insane. Another one that I use all the time, and this is kind of getting into more of the referencing environments rather than studio environments, is the boombox. To me, the boombox sounds super similar to if I was listening to something like a MacBook or like a small little, you know, Sony portable speaker. There's not going to be a ton of low end. It's going to do that band passing thing that you're going to hear in small speakers and boomboxes. But I will always just make sure that my mix is not completely falling apart. You're not getting any of that weird saturation that you'll get if you overmix something for a small speaker. And to be honest, if it sounds good on this boombox after sounding good in any of these other environments, it's probably good to go ahead and print. So once you're selecting your favorite rooms, one of my biggest tips is select the rooms as a whole that you like the best because it's really easy for you to flip from near field to far field or midfield. Uh, one thing that I used to do is I would have something like the Archon Mids be one, the Archon, the Archon Far Fields be one, and it just fills up your spaces. So I have instead four different rooms because I can easily swap between the modes, and then I have something like a boombox. Some of the other ones that I'll listen to all the time are like a car mix. These are, again, just to kind of check low end and specifically really bright, sibilant top end. The club is good to make sure that it's not going to be out of control, especially when you're controlling things like a kick delay for an electronic song. Uh, the audio file room is something that I don't dive into a ton, but I know a ton of people love that one. And then the headphones, you just can't go wrong. These are great if you don't have some Bayer Dynamics or some Audio Technicas. Really easy headphones to just kind of listen to, especially if you're doing something like tracking a vocal and you don't need a super flat, super wide response. So those are some of my favorite actual rooms. Those are some of the features around the software. One of the things that I do want to mention before we close this video out in just a minute is why I would recommend the VSX, because to be honest, for either $300 or $500, you're getting a good quality physical headphone, which is hard to find. And then you're also getting the software that can really give you a bunch of flexibility. And everybody's going to have different tastes. Everybody has different ear structures, different ear canals. Everybody's kind of used to different things. And having the options to have tons of different studios, even within those, you have different speaker options and different modes can really be huge. So I think it's worthy even if you only find one or two rooms that you love. But to be honest, I'll use almost any of these environments on a daily basis just to kind of check things. And then other than that, I'm using these all the time when I travel. Like last year, I flew out to LA to work on some records. I took these. I worked on the plane. Uh, I can go work outside by my pool. I can work at my desk. If I go to a coffee shop for a day, I'll take these. And typically, I'll plug them into an interface like either my Apollo Twin or the Apogee Boom or something like that. But I have used these directly into my MacBook. And to be honest, you do get a little bit better sound when you plug them into something like an interface. But you can plug that little 3.5 millimeter right into a headphone input of a laptop or of a desktop. And honestly, you can start start getting some decent listening environments that would not exist other than that. Um, and again, I mean, we're talking either $300 or $500 versus anywhere upwards of ten to 15000 to get something that's even decent. So once again, I can't recommend these enough. Thanks again to Slate for sponsoring this. One thing that I do want to mention is I always recommend these, especially to artists and clients that I'm working with that don't have studios or don't have nice listening environments, because to me, if I'm spending a ton of time, if I'm getting paid a bunch of money to mix a record or to produce a record and I send it to that artist, that artist is typically listening on their AirPods or their car and every single car sounds massively different. And to be honest, I will get mixed revisions that just 
aren't serving the song because that that client or that artist just has no way of actually monitoring it. So I try to get everybody that I work with to at least check these out or something like it so they can actually understand, they can give me good feedback. So if you're working with a lot of people, especially if you're working with them regularly, I would say recommend this to people you're working with so y'all can be on the same page so they can specifically say, hey, I monitored in Steven's room on the near fields and on the mid fields. And to be honest, I'm feeling like the vocals are having an issue here. Can you take a listen to that? That way you can hear from what environment they're seeing what specific issue with and it's so much easier to dive in and do revisions whenever i work with people that have the vsx system we can knock out a mix like that because we're kind of on the same page i'm not mixing it in a fifteen thousand dollar room and then sending it to them to listen to thirty dollar headphones so that's a really really big thing that i feel like i've never really seen anybody talk about if you can get a bunch of people in your network to have the same monitoring or the same headphones or the same listening environment to me that's just money it makes the whole collaborative process a little bit easier but that's going to do it for this video. Those are my five favorite rooms, my five favorite listening modes. Uh, and then other than that, that is why I do recommend VSX. Again, this video was sponsored, but all of these opinions were my own. I've talked about these headphones for years. I've posted them on our Instagram. I've talked about them on the channel. So I do appreciate the sponsorship from our friends at Slate Audio. However, I honestly mean everything that I've said in this video with my entire heart. If you are a producer or a mixer who is finding pitfalls in your production and your mixing because you don't have the money or the resources to actually get a nice room and nice monitors, you should go check out the Slate VSX, especially the Essentials version at only $2.99. But I will post a link to all of that in the description. But before I go, please let us know if you like this video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Let us know what videos you want to see down below. If you do want to see more gear reviews like this, let us know in the comments. This is not something that we do a ton. But if you enjoy it, we will do it more. Other than that, I hope you're having an amazing 2023 so far. If you want to support the channel, head over to makepopmusic.com after this video and check out all of the cool stuff we have over there. But that's going to do it. Thanks again to Slate Audio for sponsoring today. Go check out VSX, especially the Essentials Edition for only $2.99 right now. Much love. Peace.